Hello, it's Amy here. Last month, I wrote an article on the media platform saying that I have moved all my coding uh, projects from VS Code to Vim Test Editor. And also, since last month, I taken more serious about writing some tech articles. All in together, as both a developer and also a tech writer, I do need a node tech system to allow me to type fast with Vim support. Why Vim? Because Vim can help me stay in the creative flow without uh, extra distractions. For instance, I don't necessarily have to think about uh, leave my hands from keyboard to reach to my mouse and click some menus and to make some format for my test and also try to navigate the whole test with the mouse. It's really disturbing, especially during my thinking process. I'm fascinated by the Vim support by Obsidian. Obsidian is also by default a Markdown editor. Probably wondering why I bother using any note taking application. I just go to the terminal, like I work on my coding project, I write my code on my terminal. But Vim is just one important element for my note taking system. I still need other features such as content planning, I can schedule my publish and also I can track the status of my post etc. That's why I need to combine all these elements. I need a node tech application which can combine both Vim and also other important elements I needed for my node tech system. In today's video, I want to walk you through the process of unlocking the power of Vim in the Obsidian. Although Obsidian has a built-in Vim support, in order to use Vim, you have to turn on the Vim support. Okay, now we were on the Obsidian. I'll just give you an example, and I wrote a note for the current video. If I want to use Vim, I type something like after C. You can see the key yeah, here, but it doesn't work, okay? I cannot go to the normal mode, no. It's always in the insert mode. I have to use my mouse to move my cursor. It's really tedious work. Now, let's turn on the Vim support. We just go to the settings, click the editor, go all the way down here. There is a toggle called Vim King Bindings, and then you just turn on this toggle, just toggle on. And then you're here to verify you will a piece of enter the command to quit Vim without saving below. So there's a Vim command for the quitting. Okay, let me enable. Okay, command is correct. Vim mode now enabled. Okay, now we come back to our node. I'm in the normal mode. So my cursor looks like this. If I want to go to the insert mode to type something, I type I, okay? And then I can type anything I want. And also I can go back to the normal mode and then undo something, yes. I can move my cursor all the way, anywhere I want, right? If I want to delete this sentence, I just uh, D-A-S. Yes, I don't have to use my mouse to select first and then delete. Just do one thing, okay? And then now we, yeah, I'll do it. So that's why uh, Vim is very, very powerful and intuitive. I don't have to think too much. I just tap something and move my, never leave my fingers from my keyboard. I just focus on my writing process. It's very nice to use Vim so easily inside Obsidian without further configuration or use other plugins. But uh, this built-in Vim support doesn't include everything. Yeah, I just want to showcase uh, what I mean. Let's go to a terminal. Just open any project I'm working on recently. Uh, for instance, uh, I just open, if I have this file open, I want to split uh, vertically. Two windows, it's left side and right side. I could quickly do something like this because I have key bindings in my Vim. So, and also I can move my cursor over here easily. Without this, I could also check out my buffers and then I type it over here. I can open uh, other files, for instance, uh, this one, uh, maybe 
just for example if i want to go back to my previous uh, buffer tab control o as a matter of fact we can have such a feature or shortcuts in obsidian through the command from obsidian itself we have a plugin to help us do that job we just go to the settings go to the community plugins and then grab this and then we uh, just type something called vrc support and then click this one and then we simply install this one and let's wait okay and then we enable it yes pretty cool it has a very good nice documentation because i need to close this one in order to use my obsidian we can uh, open this uh, github on the browser so let me close this one because we don't need this one okay and uh, you just open this ripple from your brother and it has a very detailed documentation and why i opened this here because i will need it uh, very soon in this documentation and the first, in order to use this plugin as you can see the first two sentence is very important like you tell me this plugin loads a file loads a file called here and then you have to put create a file uh, with this name and put in the root of your vault so in my case this is my uh, vault and i have all of my notes over here so this is my root directory we simply uh, like create uh, this file i'm very lazy i just copy it. and then we go to do like this and then do like this and then we create okay we need to add some settings add some configurations in order to use this plugin because now we didn't do anything yet we just uh, create a empty web source file so let's move down a little bit because we want to use some examples at this moment we can run this command to check out uh, the performance and then we mapping our code to something like this and put this mapping inside this file so let's first try out this command like ob command and with the command name we first type this command and then we will see a list of the command inside of the developer console so uh, let's do this we first open the developer console from obsidian app uh, for mac user we could uh, press the command obviously and i and then there's a console over here just ignore all of this uh, first yeah, that matter and then we just tap uh, the column ob command and press enter and we have to restart uh, uh, obsidian app let's restart again and now everything will work tap uh, column and ob command open the developer console for mac user we tap command obviously and i now we see a list of this let's try out uh, some of them for instance there's something called workspace split vertical and then we want to uh, check out how does they work we could do like this if i want to open uh, the workspace the window i have uh, vertically uh, left side and right side like we did before in the terminal so we could type uh, the column ob command first after this we type this command workspace split vertical okay press enter now we are so in order to split this window vertically you need to tap this command but i also realize it's really not very uh you know intuitive it's still a little bit you know every time you you want to split and then you have to tap such a long command it's not very nice okay we could also to check out other things for instance uh, there's uh, something called like app go back or go forward 
if I have several buffers, uh, several files open, I can navigate these files very easily, like we did uh, in the terminal. We can try out like this one. Uh, first, uh, let's open another file, just, just for example. Okay, now I have two files, or maybe open three files. Uh, yeah, now we have three files, right? So we could just OB command app. Uh, what's the, the command? Yeah, app go back and okay. Yeah, go back. Press enter and then go back. We have this again. Go back and then go to our first file. And if we want to go forward, uh, we could app uh, go over here. You can see, yeah. And go forward, press enter. Yes, now forward. But he, again, this is really tedious. If we want to use this command, you you have to memorize all of this. I also like this feature. Like I can like folder this. Uh, for instance, I go back to this file. For instance, just give me a quick example. I want to toggle this fold like automatically, easily with Vim editor, and uh, there's a toggle fold, toggle fold all and all fold. So first, uh, this way, if we want to like ob command and then we want to edit the like editor toggle foot currently is open press this command it will close right so press enter yeah so if i ob command uh, edit toggle foot okay and that is open okay it's not nice now we go back here we go to our this source file we just created and then we put some nice code here i just put this here because i just copied this to here and then we map this this command like control o why because this way is used uh, for my vim editor i use a lot if you use vim you know this command uh, automatically uh, it's just go back to the old one command uh, control this o uh, you could think of it as uh, some old file, so it's a go back. And then not only go back, we have, uh, yes, we also want to go to forward. So we could uh, map this uh, command app, go forward, and uh, map something, yeah, control I, yeah. Uh, which was used in Vim edit as well. So let's save it. Okay, Control O, we go back. Control I, we go forward. Okay, let's go to here. And then now, this one is highlight means if we go forward, there's uh, some other files ahead of this file. Yeah, you can click this and go. Let's use our key bindings over here. So if I want to go to forward, so I type control I, okay, control I, yes. And the control I, okay, yes. If I type control O, yes, control O here, yes. Let's do one more thing for the food. Let's map, maybe we just give a name to food. You can give any name, a command editor, if you remember editor, toggle. Fold we used before and then we remap to ZA and why ZA because we use it in Vim again it's a it's a very common key bindings for the Vim uh, editor so we give toggle fold why this way toggle fold because we give this name here so we give the same name same the file and then let's go over here we have some fold like this. If we click, it's working, but yeah, I don't want to click. I just move my cursor over here and then tap uh, ZA. 
the egg. It doesn't work. Let's restart again. And I go here. We have this here. Right tap the egg. Now it's working. Normally, if I make some changes, you have to restart the terminal in order to use the Vim. So in our case, because we are using Obsidian, so if we make a change to here, and then we make sure we save this file, and we restart this app if it doesn't work. Of course, you can play around with all the other key bindings commands to your own purpose. But for this video, I just showcase these two features. Okay, in today's video, we just covered the power of Vim inside Obsidian because Obsidian has a built-in Vim support. So you just simply have to turn on the toggle in order to use Vim. I also demonstrate some missing command from this built-in Vim support. So we need additional plugin, which has a very detailed documentation. You can find out on the GitHub. Uh, we have to first create the source file in order to make sure this plugin can find the, all the configuration. Depends on your project, depends on your personal preference. You can customize all the mappings to your own purpose. I hope you find this video uh, very helpful if you want to try out Vim inside Obsidian.